In this video, we're having a look at some of the plugins from Motion Array, specifically the MI CineStyle and the MA Classic CineStyle. So what these plugins do, they basically make your footage look more like film, and you can adjust them to your liking so that maybe you want to recreate a specific kind of look, and you can also do that with these plugins from Motion Array. So let's do this. If this is the first time here, my name is Paul Filmmaker and Photographer on this channel. We do tutorials regarding filmmaking and photography and maybe some gear reviews every now and then. And if this interests you, consider subscribing. If you haven't already signed up for Motion Array, you can do so using my link in the description. And if you use that one, signing up for an annual plan, you're going to get $50 off. So check out Motion Array. If you haven't installed the plugins already, let me just show you how quickly that is. So these plugins are included in the Motion Array subscription. Today I am using uh, DaVinci Resolve, but you can use them in all of these editing software that you can see on the screen right now. So what you do is that you go to motionarray.com, you go to plugins, and then you can see that you can download it for Windows or Macintosh. And I'm using a uh, iMac, so I'm downloading it for Mac. And once it's downloaded, you basically press uh, continue to keep on installing these plugins. Once they are installed, you will get this pop-up window. If you're already signed into motionarray.com, you're already good to go. If you're not signed into motionarray, just uh, enter your email and possible password and you are good to go. And the plugins are already installed in all of your editing softwares that you have installed on your computer. So if you have Premiere, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, all of these plugins are automatically available on all of these editing softwares. Anyway, let's have a look at the plugins. The first example is shot on a Panasonic Lumix GH6 and the other examples that we're going to have a look at are shot on other devices or other cameras so that you can see that these plugins from Motion Array works with all kinds of cameras. Let's have a look at the first one uh, filmed in Geneva, Switzerland. So in this example, I have already put the color correction. It kind of looks as if it was shot on film, maybe from the 70s. Now, the first thing you want to do is look for the effects. I'm gonna write MA and space, and all of these plugins from Motion Array are available. And here we have MA CineStyle, and we just drag that over to the clip. Already, it's got a certain kind of look. Let's go over to the right side here and look at the parameters. If you click on the uh, plugin preset, you get some uh, pre-made uh, presets. Let's do the first one, basic letterbox. Uh, you can see that they do some adjustment and you have the letterbox, uh, which you can remove if you want to. Grainy, speaks for itself, puts more grain into the image. Medium is a medium grade. Hazy memory is very graded. This specific plugin from Motion Array is quite heavy to render, so you might not be able to uh, play it back in real time. If you're on DaVinci, I suggest you to go up to Playback, go to Render Cache and press Smart, so that this clip will be rendered slowly in the background. Basic, I mean, it is self-explanatory. Heavy, light, and saturated. This is good to go. Look at that before, after. Now let's have a look underneath what this is. Let's actually reset the whole thing. The S curve is basically the contrast that you want in the footage. So let's move that one a bit back and forth. You can see that it's getting less contrasty or at 100 it is more contrasty. The color adjustment, we're going to leave that on 65 for the moment. If I put it down to zero it's basically very little color correction and if i put it to 100 it's a lot but that will also affect uh, the parameters just below as you can see here color adjustment settings that's now at zero if we shift that one it goes towards a cooler tone and the plus goes to more a yellow magenta hue as well you change the hue in the image. And if I adjust the color adjustment up here, you can also see it's basically the strength of the parameters that you are using below. Exposure, if you want it to be brighter or a bit lower, 
If you just want to adjust it a bit, don't use this little thingy. Use the numbers over there because you can go and really hone in what you want. Saturation, again, self-explanatory. The letterbox uh, enable or not. And the cool thing about the letterbox is that you can offset the image. So look at this. If you want it to be a bit higher up or a bit lower, for example, let's go to the second example. The second example uh, is a drone shot and it is by a DJI Mavic 3 Pro. Let's go to the color tab, press option D to see before and after. So this was before and this is after. I have done a slight uh, color adjustment on the first note. You can see it just added some uh, contrast, some color, some saturation. And let's start going through the presets of the classic Cine style. Here we have a few different presets, one from 1917, 1922, a Kodak from 1928, a movie on with the show 1929, Gentlemen Prefer Blonde from 1950, and an aviator two strip and three strip aviator as well but we are gonna reset it and the s curve is just like in the uh, other plugin it is basically the strength of contrast we're gonna leave that at 50 exposure again the same and saturation the same as well self-explanatory black you can change the color of the black if you want to um, to get a um, kind of a vintage look maybe if you want that but we are going to leave that on black zero defocus is to slightly defocus the image a bit uh, maybe you want that for a dream sequence or something like that but we're going to leave it on zero now in this one we can now choose the film grain either a 35 millimeter i'm going to turn the strength up a bit so you can see it a bit better 35 millimeter, 16 millimeter becomes a bit bigger and the 8 millimeter becomes even more prominent. Uh, this is way too much, uh, but let's go to 35 millimeter and now let's go for 16 in this case. We'll turn it down slightly because this is too much. The seed is something I didn't mention on the other plugin because I think you had seed there as well. However, the seed is basically a different starting point from the grain and it shouldn't really matter too much. Down here is where the difference is. You have red, green, and blue. So if I change the density here, you can see that certain parts of the image is being affected. Also with the green, you see, and the blue as well, changing obviously more the blue. But playing around with these ones can really uh, help you find a very cinematic look like a vintage look maybe i already like how uh, this looks like just moving the blue down to minus 34 and you can also change the negative play around with that a bit if necessary just moving these uh, parameters just slightly you get a completely different look as you can see before and after output gamma Again, if you play around with these ones, you're gonna get a slight color shift. Letterbox, in this case, we can then choose if we want a 133. Another common one would be 185, 235. My timeline is two to one, so it is slightly wider than usual, but again, you can play around with it. And like in the other plugin, you can offset the image slightly if you need to do that, which is very, very cool. Let's move on to the next example, which is an iPhone shot. This is up on a glacier up in Norway. I was uh, on a glacier hike with my family this summer and it was just awesome. It was amazing. So this is filmed with an iPhone 13 mini. This is how the footage is without the, uh, well, I've done a slight color correction, as you can see. And afterwards, it looks like this. Much deeper colors, much more cinematic. Look at the difference in the, in the black of the jacket and the contrast in general. That is something that is very difficult to achieve, uh, moving the parameters in general in your software. So it speeds it up a lot using the plugins from Motion Array. Let's reset it. We are gonna remove the letterbox in this one. We are also gonna use, let's use saturated. 
SCOV is at 100, that's a bit too much. Turn the hue to about 180. So I'm a bit too red, but the white and the snow, it's quite natural. I'm gonna turn down the strength. Go to my face again. Grain, let's make them a little bit bigger so we can see them better. As it's snow, it's a bit difficult to see. And the vignettes also to make it a little bit more moody and to change the size of it. Make it softer. And now I have seen the shape and now I can just make it a bit wider. Like so. Vignettes with and without. Maybe that's a bit too much. Like, there you go. And here we have a before and after much deeper colors, it just becomes a little bit more cinematic. I just played around a bit with a uh, picture that I took up there on the glacier, and I was surprisingly happy with how easy it was to grade that one as well with just a few clicks. So this is the original one, and with just 10 seconds of adjusting, you got to something like this. And I think it is really stating how easy it is to work with the Motion Array plugins. There are tons more plugins from Motion Array that we are gonna go through in another video. I have also made a review of Motion Array that you can check out right here. And until next time, my name is Paul, and I'm signing off. Have a great day. Peace.